Well, thank you very much. We'll now take a, a couple questions each. Uh, uh, Reuters, and Je uh, Andrea, you guys the first question. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you, Chancellor Schultz. Um, Mr. President, I had wanted to ask you about this um, Nord Stream project that you've long opposed. You didn't mention it just now by name, nor did Chancellor Schultz. Did you receive assurances from Chancellor Schultz today that Germany will, in fact, pull the plug on this project uh, if Russia invades Ukraine? And did you discuss what the definition of invasion could be? And then Chancellor Scholz, when I ask you, um, if I Sie, may ask uh, you, Chancellor Scholz, you said that there was some strategic ambiguity uh, that was needed in and, um, terms of sanctions. Um, I just want to know whether the sanctions you are envisaging and the EU is working on and the US as well are already finished, finalized, or is there still work ongoing? And also, as you said, it's not a Sagen wollen, was genau da drin ist, ist You're das eine really Ausrede, um dass is Deutschland that vielleicht zum Beispiel die SWIFT-Maßnahmen äh, nicht the Swift Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be, uh, we, there will be no longer Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. But the, but how, will you, how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do that. Thank you very much for your question. I want to be absolutely clear. We have intensively prepared everything to be ready with the necessary sanctions if there is a, a military aggression against Ukraine. And this is necessary. It is necessary that we do this in advance so that Russia can clearly understand that these are far-reaching, severe measures. It is part of the, this process that we do not spell out everything in public because Russia could understand that there might be even more to come. And at the same time, it is very clear we are well prepared with far-reaching measures. We will take these measures together with our allies, with our partners, with the U.S., and we will take all necessary steps. You can be sure that there won't be any measures in which we have a differing approach. We will act together and jointly this is a good idea to say to our american friends we will be united we will act together and we will take all the necessary steps and all the necessary steps will be done by all of us together today, will you commit today to turning off and pulling the plug on Nord Stream 2 you didn't mention it you haven't mentioned it as i already said we are acting together we are absolutely united and we will not taking different steps. We will do the same steps and they will be very, very hard to Russia and they should understand. Do you recognize someone now, Chancellor? Herr Fischer. Michael Fischer, DPA, vielen Dank. Herr Präsident, zuerst eine Frage an Sie. Mr. President, one question to you. The U.S. over the last few years have exported heavy weapons to Ukraine, and Germany excludes that, has only delivered 5,000 helmets to Ukraine. Don't you think that NATO should act unanimously in this respect? And Germany, as the strongest European NATO partner, should also deliver heavy weapons to Ukraine. Uh, and Ukraine has asked Germany to do so. And on Nord Stream 2, I would also like to ask, don't you think with regard to the threat posed by Russia, Germany should already uh, rethink its position on Nord Stream 2? And the third question, if I may, 
in den vergangenen äh, Tagen, Wochen, Over the last few days Kritik, and weeks, there has been äh, severe criticism um, äh, from the US media and from gegeben, Congress as well, vis-à-vis äh, -vis Germany about the reliability of Germany as an ally. This has been called into question. Do you understand this criticism? Is Germany a reliable partner from your point of view? And Mr. Chancellor, also a question to you, Nord Stream 2. You said all options are on the table. Nord Stream 2 nicht beim Namen You're not mentioning nicht, Nord Stream 2 by name. Don't you think if you were to spell this out, you could win back trust as a strong ally here for the US? There's no need to win back trust. He has a complete trust of the United States. Germany is our, one of our most important allies in the world. There is no doubt about Germany's partnership with the United States, none. With regard to Helping Ukraine, one of the largest contributors financially to Ukraine has been Germany. Germany has been in the forefront of making sure of providing economic assistance. You also asked the question, you asked so many, I can't remember them all, um, but uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the U.S. media saying Germany is not reliable, Germany is completely reliable, completely, totally, thoroughly reliable. I have no doubt about Germany at all. Wir sind eng verbunden mit den Vereinigten Staaten. Die transatlantische Partnerschaft zwischen Deutschland und den USA zählt zu den ganz, ganz wichtigen Konstanten der deutschen Politik, die auch für die Zukunft von allergrößter Bedeutung sind. Und wir können sich darauf verlassen, dass das in der Zukunft immer ganz, ganz, ganz vorne bei den Prioritäten ist. Wir sind im Rahmen der NATO on das behalf Land, of NATO, we are the Europa country den in continental Europe that is doing, um, making the largest contribution, financial werden. means and also military power. Land, and we are the country sehr, sehr that mit den USA streiten wir uns immer noch darüber, share. den fully, größten Teil leistet, aber auch einen sehr großen Teil der finanziellen Hilfen für die Ukraine zur Verfügung Ukraine. stellt. Es sind seit 2014 etwa 2 Milliarden Dollar, die billion direkt aus US dem Dollars deutschen Finanzierungsrahmen kommen und über die Europäische Union sind es noch mal etwa 3,8 Milliarden. Also ein wichtig, billion, that is made available, so substantial means to stabilize the Ukrainian economy and we are willing to continue with that sort of contribution. So this is the very strong and unbreakable friendship between our two countries. Part of this is that with regard to the difficult situation at the Ukrainian border uh, due to the Russian troops, we have made it very clear we will unanimously act in terms of sanctions. Mr. Mr. President, once again, uh, a question with regard to arms exports. Do you think it is okay that NATO partners have different approaches here? And on Nord Stream 2, once again, do you think the current positioning um, of Germany with regard to the Russian threat is okay? Look, there is no doubt in America's mind that Germany is an incredibly reliable ally and one of the leading physical powers in NATO, number one. Number two, the notion that Nord Stream, T would go, Nord Stream 2 would go forward with an invasion by the Russians is just not going to happen. Now, uh, Wall Street Journal, Sabrina. Thank you, Mr. President. Based on everything you know now, do you think that President Putin will authorize an invasion of Ukraine before the end of the winter? And what is your message to the roughly 30,000 Americans who are currently in Ukraine? Do you think that they should leave the country? Well, I've had discussions, numerous discussions with, uh, uh, with uh, the Russians and particularly with Putin. I don't know that he's even made it. I don't know that he knows what he's going to do. And uh, I think he has to realize that it would be a gigantic mistake for him to move on Ukraine. The impact on Europe and the rest of the world would be devastating. And he would pay a heavy price. I have been very, very straightforward and blunt with President Putin, both on the phone and in person. We will impose the most severe sanctions that have ever been imposed, economic sanctions. And there will be a lot to pay for that down the road. 
It will affect others as well. It will affect us somewhat, it will affect Europeans, but it will have profound impact on his economy. And uh, I, uh, I, but I don't know, I know that he's in a position now to be able to invade, almost uh, assuming that uh, um, the, uh, the ground is frozen above Kyiv. Uh, he has the capacity to do that. What he's going to do, I don't know. And uh, I don't think anybody knows but him. To the Americans who are currently in Ukraine, should they leave the country? I think it'd be wise to leave the country. Uh, not, I don't mean our, I don't mean, I'm not talking about our diplomatic corps. I'm talking about Americans who are there. I hate to see them get caught in a crossfire if in fact they did admit it. And there's no need for that. And I, if I were they, if I had anyone there, I'd say leave. And to Chancellor Schultz, can you outline specific steps that Germany is taking to reduce its energy dependence on Russia? And what do you say to those who suggest that German reliance on Russian gas is limiting Europe's options for how to respond to the crisis in Ukraine? Thank you very much for raising that question because it gives me the opportunity to address a topic that's important to me. One good uh, news, maybe, within its strategy on fighting man-made climate change, Germany has decided at very short, uh, in a very short period of time to phase out of the use of oil and gas by uh, very soon. And by 2045, Germany will have a carbon-neutral economy as well one of the strongest economies of the world. And with regard to these um, energies, we often think about heating at home and driving a car, but we're talking about industrial production, producing steel, uh, chemical uh, substances, cement. And changing these industrial processes and reorganizing such systems is what we have planned. So this year, we will continue to take far-reaching decisions that will help us to use more wind energy, wind energy, offshore wind energy, onshore wind energy, and solar energy, and expand the capacities, expand the grids, and have a strategy for Germany, but also worldwide, on the use of hydrogen, which is a central element for us to change our industrial processes that are using oil and gas right now. The industry is willing to be on board. We're doing this together with them, but it will probably be the biggest industrial modernization project in Germany in 100 years, with very good prospects that we will develop new technologies that other uh, partners in the world can use as well. And this will help us fight climate change. And by the way, uh, the energy mix today, we are talking about one quarter of our energy that is linked to gas, and only part of that gas comes from Russia, a big part comes from Norway or the Netherlands. And of course, um, it is very important to us that we develop an infrastructure that will give us the opportunity to have all options available and react if needed, so you don't have to be concerned. There are some who should be concerned, who see themselves maybe too much as a deliverer of such uh, resources. Because we are focusing on renewable energies, we will go down that path um, and make sure that this is the uh, profitable future. Mr. Rinken. Mr. President, I would like to ask you a question about LNG. Germany and Europe are much more dependent on Russian gas than other regions of the world. And you promised European allies to help with LNG, but uh, this resource is more expensive. It's not available in the volumes that might be needed to replace Russian gas. And I would like to know from you how you would help Europeans in case of a conflict with Russia. Is this an empty promise, or what can you really do? What can you offer? And in addition, the US are buying oil from Russia uh, worth billions of dollars, and I would like to know whether these um, transfers are also part of the sanctions package against Russia. And Mr. Chancellor, liquefied natural gas, um, there is a big controversy in Germany about um, fracking gas. In how far is LNG even 
even a real um, replacement, or is it uh, also with a view to the climate club you intend to found? Is it really an alternative to Russian pipeline gas? Well, let me respond. Uh, first of all, we are looking at opportunities to make up for lost gas LNG from Russia. We're on their way of trying to see what we can do to do that, de de dealing with our friends around the world as well. We think we could make up a significant portion of it uh, that would be lost. But you know what everybody forgets here is Russia needs to be able to sell that gas and sell that oil. Russia relies, a significant part of Russia's budget, it's the only thing they really have to export. And if, in fact, it's cut off, then they're going to be hurt very badly as well. And it's a consequence to them as well. This is not just a one-way street. And so uh, we are looking at what we could do to help compensate for loss of immediate loss of gas uh, in Europe if it occurs. And uh, that's what we've been working on for some time now. I can confirm that we work closely with the United States of America, and uh, Joe Biden and I are working closely together as well. We are prepared for all kinds of situations, and that's part of uh, what we do when we say we prepare sanctions. That means we need to be able to, to react at any time, and this is happening. With regard to the use of LNG, I can say that the biggest volume of LNG used across the world is uh, gas, and that is part of the debate. Concerning a long-term perspective, I already uh, outlined what this is about. We will modernize our economy, and where gas is being used, we will switch to hydrogen. This will be a process that will be fast, will happen faster than many might imagine today, and that will create a bright future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes. Do you believe that it's still an option for the actual possibility, given that there are 100,000 The answer is yes. 